God is worthy. We worship you, our Lord. You're worthy. You are worthy to be praised. Just keep playing the verse for me. You know, there's a little word in Hebrew. It's the word yada. Not yada, yada, yada. But yada is one of the Hebrew terms for praise. In fact, there are many terms for praise in the Hebrew language. But I love this little word yada because it's packed with a powerful meaning. You know, in the Hebrew language, the, the letters of the language are words with a meaning. They're not just letters that don't mean anything like in the English alphabet. But the significance is the three letters in this word are so awesome. The first word is yud. Yud, letter word is yud. It means hands extended in worship. Would you just do that now? Extend your hands in worship. Did you ever watch like the King of Kings or those, those great biblical movies and when they get news the first thing that happens is their hands raise to God in worship. That's that word yud. The second letter word in the word yada is the word dalit which means door. It means a door. And the third word is the word hey. It's actually it actually means the spirit of the Lord. It's the fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet and it's pronounced like this. It's the breath of God. It's the Spirit of the Lord. And how many know when the Spirit of the Lord comes to your heart and to your life and to your house, along with Him comes favor. Along with Him comes grace. Along with Him comes blessing. So, the little message in that word, yada, is this. When I lift my hands and worship and adoration to my Lord and Savior, the Spirit of the Lord opens the door of grace and blessing and He pours it down on my life. Can you give Him a mighty shout of praise in this afternoon? Now sing, we give you all the glory and lift your voice as you sing. Hallelujah. Come on, we give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We worship you. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy. Now you worship as the musicians play it mightily and skillfully with everything you can give me. your breath inside of us you know the word says in him we live and we move and we have our being and it also says that all things consist in him if he's in your life if he's central in your heart and in your life that word consist means holds together he holds together your life no matter what the storm is going around you no matter what's coming against you if you're facing the most terrible thing you've ever been through in your life, the fact of the matter is, in Him, you live and move and have your being, and He's holding it all together tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you tonight. You're worthy, Jesus. 
Colin, a few years ago, the Holy Spirit gave me a song, Fill This Temple. And I'd like you to sing it with me tonight as we worship. Hallelujah. Karabosha, karabosi. It's a prayer that the Holy Spirit would fill the temple. Amen. You know, the Bible says that the glory of the latter house, say the latter house, will be greater than the former house. That's Haggai chapter 2, verse number 9. The former house was Israel's temple, right? We know from reading the scripture that the glory was so thick and so heavy that the priests couldn't even stand to minister. I wouldn't mind if I couldn't stand to minister tonight. Would you mind if the glory cloud in this room was so heavy? It already is so heavy and so thick that you can't even stand to minister. But the good news is the latter house is the church. Say, that's me. Put your hand on your heart. Say, that's me. Would you say, I'm the house? Paul said, don't you know? Don't you know you're the temple? Don't you know you're the place now? We don't so much welcome them into a room as we welcome them into our house. You've got a visitor coming tonight. He's the king of glory. Hallelujah. He's coming to your house. Is he welcome tonight? Is he welcome tonight? Hallelujah. Welcome him into your house as we sing this worship song. Fill this temple tonight, Spirit of the Lord. Mariana, pray in the spirit all over this place. Pray in the spirit. The glory of God is in this room. Blessed be your name. The words go, let my heart be the temple of your spirit. Let my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace. Let me be a holy habitation where your spirit is pleased to dwell. Lord, I long to know your glory. How many of you have a longing for the glory of God? How many of you have a longing to know him? I want to offer the sacrifice of praise. Fill this temple, Jesus, with your spirit once again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Let my heart be the temple of your spirit. Let my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace. Let me be a holy habitation where your spirit is pleased to dwell lord i long to know your glory oh lord i long to know your glory i want to offer i want to offer the sacrifice of praise fill this temple fill this temple lord with your spirit once again hallelujah sing that last line fill this temple lord fill this temple lord with your spirit once again give him a praise offering in this room tonight hallelujah he's here Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Tell him as, as we sing this next song in worship, just before Pastor comes, we're going to worship. Let him fill your temple today. Yes, pray in the Spirit as you worship. If you're joining online, we welcome you as we worship tonight. However you're watching, the Spirit of the Lord is going to fill your house with his glory tonight. Let my heart be the temple of your spirit. Let my spirit feel the warmth 
of your embrace, your embrace. I want to be a holy habitation. Let me be a holy habitation. Where your spirit is pleased to dwell. Where your spirit is pleased to dwell. Lord, I long to know. Oh, Lord, I long to know your glory. I want to offer, I want to offer the sacrifice of praise. Fill this temple, Lord, with your spirit once again. Come, Lord, fill this temple tonight with your glory. Fill this temple, Lord, with your spirit once again. Pray it as you sing, let my heart be the temple. Let my heart be the temple of your spirit. Of your grace. Let me be a holy habitation. Let me be a holy habitation where your spirit is pleased to dwell. Cry out, oh Lord, I long to know. Oh Lord, I long. Say his name, Jesus. Song of Solomon says his name is as ointment or the anointing poured forth. Just the mention of his name releases the anointing. Let's worship the name. Let's lift the name of Jesus. He said, just lift up my name and I'll draw all men unto you. Amen. How many of you are believing for souls to be saved tonight? How many are believing for loved ones to be saved tonight? Yes. Go ahead. Praise him in advance for it. Amen. How many of you are believing for healing to be poured out all over this place and all over the airwaves tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name. Oh Lord, for your name, for your name. So great, Jesus, and pray to be. Praises to, to your name, oh Lord. Praises to your awesome name, oh Lord. For your name is great, for your name is great. So great, one more time to be great. Just worship in the spirit till Pastor Benny comes. This is going to be extraordinary tonight. Awesome night tonight. Can you all hear me? Yes, we hear you, Pastor. Well, I'm watching you live, so you can all be seated, you dear people. I'm still watching. I, I, I guess we we're 45 seconds delayed up. But if you can hear me, let me know, Jim. Yes, sir. We hear you loud and clear. Hello, you sweetheart. Bless your heart. Well, I'm glad Jim is there, and I'm glad Pastor Dan is there with you tonight. I'm sorry not to be there, and I'd like you to know why I'm not there, and I'd like to make the announcement tonight for the first time. So not only will you hear it, but you know, others watching... Uh, Periscope and so forth will hear it. But first, Pastor Dan, thank you, thank you, thank you for being with us. You are an amazing, amazing. And uh, Jim, bless you for being there. Thank love you so you, much. We love you, Pastor. Love you too, Jim. Thank you. And I've got to, I've got to say something to all of you. It's, I was sitting on the plane yesterday about to fly to California so I can be in the class. Plus, I've been gone for so long, and just everything in me knew not, not to go because my mom basically has only hours to live. And I'm, you know, sure you dear people who have gone through that, it's probably the most difficult thing we do and we, we go through in life. And uh, I'm sure Greg is is there. I I can see you, dear Greg, and dear Jean, bless your hearts. But anyways, 
we were talking about his mom a few days back. And basically my mom yesterday morning uh, was doing well, and I went to see her. I had asked the Lord not to take her home while I was in South Africa. So when I came back, she was still, you know, able to communicate and so forth. And So yesterday morning we had a precious time together. She was worshiping the Lord, and we're all crying watching her. And played a beautiful hymn, How Great Thou Art, that she loves us, like her favorite. And then I just happened to tell her that I'll be back. I wanted to go eat and come back. When I came back, she was no longer able to communicate. So I had a flight and said, well, maybe, you know, I'll go and come back the next few days, not knowing how long she'll live naturally. So anyways, <clears throat> sitting on the plane and everything in me knew, everything in me knew that it, it was wrong for me to leave. In fact, I kept asking the Lord, I said, Lord, should I go? He said, no, you need to stay. But, you know, you know how sometimes you think it's your head talking to you. And I said, now, Lord, is this you talking or is this my head talking? He says, I told you to stay. And then he said something that just shocked me. He said, you're going to have bad turbulence, and don't blame me for it if you go. And I thought, wow, this is, it was quite like a shock. But anyways, I'm sitting on the flight on Delta Airlines to fly out, and the captain comes on and says, we're going to have bad turbulence. I said, get me out of here. So I got off. And uh, the pilot came out and said, listen, I'm sorry, I have to get off the plane and so on. But, you know, everybody was just rejoicing in, at, in my family that I did not leave. Well, thank God I did not because this morning they called me at 7 and said, you better get you know over here quick. Mom's breathing has changed and so on. So she's, uh, she, she hasn't had any food or, or any fluids now for 48 hours, hasn't been able to eat anything, drink anything. She's kind of in semi-coma almost. She's in and out. And what they're basically, you know, saying to us, hospice came this morning, and what they said is she, she, they don't think she'll make, she'll make it through till morning. So we're kind of all holding on. But at a precious time tonight, uh, played the Gators for her and, she was trying to worship and could not move her body. We were all sitting crying, watching, you know, just really very, very difficult. So I think by, by morning she'll be with the Lord. So thank you for understanding and thank you for your prayers and support. It's a very, very difficult thing. You know, with my dad, my dad went with the, went to be with the, with the Lord. So suddenly he was 58 years old and died with cancer. It happened so fast. Uh, it took us a few days to realize he's gone, and then you grieve afterwards. In this case, we're looking at my mom who's 85, <sighs> declining so rapidly. Uh, yesterday morning she was talking. Now, by afternoon yesterday, she wasn't able to communicate, and today, of course, no response at, at all. So it's been it's, it's, it's been a very, very difficult two days just to watch your mom you know and you all the memories come back and it's painful i must i must say to you uh, pastor tamari told me years ago he said the most painful thing any one of us go through to go through is the death of our mom but you know we don't believe in death because the bible doesn't say that the saints die it says that the saints sleep because one of these days it will all rise, thank God. We'll see him again in glory. So it's, it's, it's not easy, but it's wonderful that God's grace helps all of us. And Jim, you went through the same thing with your mom. I, I can't hear you, Jim. I don't know if you can still hear me, all yes. of you. Just let me know. Yes, we hear you, Pastor. Yes. Okay. But, Jim, you've been a great friend, a great strength, and... And now, you know, here I'm going through it. You went through it a few years back. But I just want you all to know, every one of you, thank God for Jesus. Where would we be if it wasn't for our faith? Uh, no, you, it just hits you. It, 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 
the reality of heaven, the reality of our faith, the reality of what we believe, the promises of God come to life in such a powerful way. And, you know, we've just been looking around saying, thank God for the Lord. Where would we be without Him? And, uh, you know, we have to make a, a greater commitment to serve Him, love Him, follow Him, cleave to Him, be close to Him, because life without Him has no meaning. I, the most precious thing I saw yesterday is when my mom was worshiping the Lord, crying, and within hours she was unable to, com to communicate or say anything. And I know... You sweet people all, all have a precious mom that you love. Some of you, your mom is, in, is already in glory. Some of you, like Greg and others, they're, they're still with you. And I would say one thing to everybody listening, here and around the world. Treasure every moment you have with them. While you have them, treasure every moment. And honor them with all your heart and life, because God will bless you for that. Honor your father and mother that it may be well with you. You live long on the earth. And I can tell you something that I've learned. God will never stop blessing you when you honor your, your, your mom and dad. Because that's the greatest thing you can do. So those that still have mommies and daddies, honor them. And honor doesn't mean, you know, okay, I honor. No, no, honor means money. Honor means you send them things they need. Honor means you support them. Honor means you call them. Honor means you go see them. Because many, many moms and dads are neglected by their children, sadly. But that's not really honor, is it? So please do that for yourself. I promise you, you'll, you'll be glad you did. So thank you again. And I'll be I'll be in tomorrow. Uh, sorry, I'll be in Wednesday, God willing. And uh, and I want to introduce you to one a uh, wonderful friend of mine who's becoming a very dear dear friend, and that's Pastor Dan, with us from Chicago. He's dynamic, very anointed. I hope he can sing a song for you tonight, because not only can he sing and preach, but he's a really powerful, powerful anointed servant of the Lord. So let's just welcome him real good and big right now and keep praying for him, will you? Let's welcome him. Bless him. Thank you, Pastor Benny. Why don't everybody stand to your feet? And first of all, I want you to give Pastor Benny some love. Let him hear you make some noise. If you really love Pastor Benny, clap those hands and make some noise. And why don't you just tell him, we love you, Pastor Benny. And now let's do the most important thing. Let's lift up Pastor Benny and his family to the Lord right now. Father, we just stretch our hands toward you tonight. And oh, Father, we just declare and we decree that you are right there with Pastor Benny and his family tonight. God, we just declare that you are standing there. Father, that your angels are encamped round about them, oh God. We thank you for the comfort and the solace of the Holy Spirit right now, oh God. We thank you for the peace that passes all understanding. And oh God, we just ask you right now that you would dispatch heavenly angels, oh God, to be there right now. And oh God, that you would, Father, dry every tear from their eye. Hold them and rock them in your arms right now, oh God, and let them know that truly, oh God, your child, your child is in your care. You are the custodian of her soul and we thank you and we praise you and we bless you. And now, Father, we live past a Benny, for we know that his entire family is leaning on him during this time. And he's worried about his ministry and this ministry and worried about all of us here tonight. But, Father, we just release him from worrying because we just say have peace in the name of Jesus. We just tell him tonight in the name of Jesus to have peace and to lean on the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you now. We thank you. If you love Pastor Benny, give him some big love. Big love. One more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you still there, Pastor Benny? Okay, he's what? He's, he, 
We just talked right before I came out here. I just found out I was, you know, I'm from Chicago. You all can sit down. I'm from Chicago. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm from Chicago. I just found out. Now, Chicago is 2,000 miles away. I just found out a couple of hours ago I was coming here. So if you think you're surprised, we're all surprised tonight. I just returned from, I was here a couple of months ago. And uh, oh my goodness, were any of you here the night that we had a few months? What? My tribe is in the house tonight. And we had some Holy Ghost fun that night, didn't we, Sister Jean? We had some fun that night. And so I just got back from South Africa. So I'll tell you this little story, okay? Pastor Benny called me on a Tuesday, two weeks ago Tuesday. And I, I get a phone call from uh, Benny Hinn Ministries, and they said, uh, Dan, we need you to go to the airport. And I was like, why am I going to the airport? And they said, well, Pastor Benny wants you to know if you'll go to South Africa and your tickets are like at the airport now. I was like, South Africa? It, right now? And they're like, yeah, 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 like in eight hours, would you just go? And I said, well, like overnight or what are we doing? And they said, no, no, for two weeks. You're going to go for two weeks. I said, well, I have this little thing called I pastor a church in Chicago. And so what am I going to, I don't know if I can pull this together. So I pulled all my team together, 28 employees at my, at, at my church lighthouses. The, uh, for everybody watching in Chicago tonight, uh, Lighthouse Church is the largest multicultural ministry in Chicago. 72 nations represented. I founded it when I was 16 years old. I'm only 24 now, so you can. Don't start no stuff. You don't know me. <laughs> That was 38 years ago. It was kind of accidental. Uh, this little church was a little group of people. It wasn't even a church. They didn't even know if they were a church. They were just a few people meeting in a storefront building. And they were uh, trying to decide if they were going to become a church. And so they had a, a, a guy that was going to be the pastor. But then when he heard there was no money involved, he was like, well, I'm out. So there was this old lady, elderly lady. My wife is trying to help me understand. You don't call ladies old ladies. She, you say mature and, and elderly. And so uh, there was this mature lady in our con in the little group of people. And she said, well, Dan has the gift of speak. Now, she never said preach. She was a smart lady. She said, Dan's got the gift of speak. I was 16 years old. I'd already graduated from high school. I was leaving to go to medical school. I spent about eight years. I wanted to be a neurosurgeon. So I was... Uh, getting ready to study medicine. And so I was leaving. They said, well, he can speak till we get a, I'll never forget these words, till we get a real pastor. <laughs> well, that was 38 years ago and we're still looking for a real pastor. So if, if anybody knows anybody, but the Lord took, that's why I'm, I'm bold about young people because I was 16 years old in the streets of Chicago and 38 years, and now that congregation is the largest multicultural church, almost 6,000 members there today, and 38 years on that wall for Jesus Christ. So when I hear people talk about, oh, you're just a kid, you're just young people, I say, hold up. Let me tell you something God uses. It doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what, where, where you are in life. God, I feel the anointing in this place tonight. It doesn't matter where you are in life. If you just say yes, Lord. If you just say yes to the Lord. He will use you. He can use you whatever age you are. He can use you whatever weight you are. I've been fat. I've been skinny. I've been everything in between. I keep all my clothes because I just kind of go through all of those. Somebody should have said amen right there. That was your opera. Do you feel my pain? Okay. But the Lord can use you. I wish you'd sit up and put your shoulders back and say God is going to use me. Say, my greatest days are in front of me. Come on, say it like you mean it. My greatest days are in front of me. So, I'm with Pastor Benny for two weeks in South Africa. And it was life-changing. In fact, if you all don't get up and leave, since you found out Pastor Benny wasn't going to be here, uh, 
don't play. I'm going to tell you a couple things that happened in South Africa. It was amazing. Life changing. My life will never be the same. I have cried my tear ducts out. So I got home. I got back to Chicago. I had five services to preach over the weekend. And before I ever got back to Chicago, I had another call saying, Pastor Dan, we want you to come to Orlando, Florida with Pastor Benny. I was like, no, I got to go home and preach. I've been gone for two weeks. So then this morning I get a phone call that I'm coming here on tonight. I said, my heavens, Pastor Benny, could I get a little notice on the next time when you call? Everything is I need it now. That's how I pray. I'm always telling the Lord, I need it now. Well, Pastor Benny lives that way. He needs it right now. So all while ago, I just kind of grabbed everything and ran to the airport, Adeline. I just kind of ran to the airport. And all the way on the plane, Reggie, you want to know for real what I was thinking about all the way on the plane? All I was thinking about was the look on all these beautiful people's face when they came here tonight for Pastor Benny and the nerd from Chicago walks out. I was like, can you imagine how awesome is my role tonight? But somehow when I walked into this sanctuary, when I walked into this place, here's what I felt. I felt two things. First of all, any place is a sanctuary where you make Jesus welcome and you make Him comfortable. Honey, I have made my car, Sister Pat, I have made my car a sanctuary. Do you hear me? You're going to sing before this night's over, girl. I got news for you. I never forgot about you singing the last time I was here. But I've made my car a sanctuary. Do you hear me? I have made the buffet a sanctuary. Usually when they ran out of the food I like, but I have made a buffet, a sanctuary. You can make anywhere a sanctuary where you invite Jesus to show up. So I walked in tonight and I said, well, if anybody is upset about it, and I understand, I'm upset about it. I, I wish Pastor Benny was right here, but we're going to make a sanctuary in this place for a few minutes tonight. And then the second thing I felt was this. Pastor Benny, I know you're listening and watching right now and people all over the world watching. I walked in here and, and Pastor Jim, this is my first time meeting you. You are amazing. Would you all give him some love? Wow! But I walked in here and you know what I just kind of felt? I remember all of you from when I was here before and I'm so comforted that you're all here. I, I, I felt like when I walked in here a while ago, I just felt like, uh, Sister Linda, I felt like this is a big hug for Pastor Benny. All of your presence here right now, if, if you left, it would kind of feel like you didn't love Pastor Benny. But your presence right now, just you sitting there, because the camera, I want them to make sure they get every face in this room. All y'all faces going across the whole world. So that he feels a big hug from every one of you. That tonight what we're here to do I kind of feel like this. If Pastor Benny ever needed you to be here, it's probably tonight. It's probably tonight. So your presence. Have you ever walked, had somebody walk into your room that just their presence made you feel better? I guarantee you, Pastor Benny tonight, when he saw you here in this sanctuary packed out, your presence made him feel better. So... Would you give some big love, Pastor Benny? We love you, and I just wanted you to know all of that. We'll set that there till I kick that over. So, should I play and sing something before I minister? I'm only going to preach like 23 minutes, okay? Because, you know, let's face it, that's always the thing on everybody's mind. How long is this white boy going to preach? So I just like to put it out there. You know, I like it makes people feel more comfortable, okay? Because they just kind of want to know. Now, I, I could go three hours, but Pastor Benny, I found in South Africa, Pastor Benny can go for seven hours. And he, he has the most gifted anointing for endurance of anybody I've ever seen in my life. Am I right about it? He has an endurance that is unbelievable. So... Reggie, if you'll put that on a grand piano sound, I'm going to come over here, okay? And I'm going to see which microphone I like the best. Hallelujah. Would you just hold testing? I'll go with that one.
When peace Like a river <laughs> I feel something up in here Attended My way When sorrow Like sea Billows Roll Whatever My lot Thou hast taught me How to say It is well It is well With my soul Some of you are going through your own stuff tonight And listen When peace uh, like a river under the ocean attended my, 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 my way when when sorrow like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me how to say it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well with my soul, it is well, it is well. I love when I walk in a place and the saints know how to pray. The atmosphere changes. A little more in this monitor, please. The atmosphere is changing. God need ever need. Somebody came tonight who needs a healing. And oh God, I heard Pastor Benny say it all over South Africa. He is not the healer, but Jesus is the healer. And oh God, use tonight. Even Pastor Benny, far away as he's praying for the people in the 
this room tonight that need a healing, oh God. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh in this place. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh in this place. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Bless your name. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Mm, Jesus, 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 we love you. Could you take 30 more seconds just to call his name with your hand stretched and put an I love you in there. Come on, tell him I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. My soul loves you. Come on, since we're here, we may as well give him the glory. We may as well give him the honor and give him the praise. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, we love you. I hear you, Zion. I hear you, Zion. Bless his name. Those who call upon him, he is nigh unto them. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. There's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus. Like the fragrance after the rain. I'm a little still fired up from Chicago this weekend. So I don't know how fired up you will allow me to help you get. But if you knew how I'm trying to simmer down. Because I went home this weekend and we literally, we literally had altars jam-packed with people that were crying out for God for deliverance and for healing. At the end of our last service on yesterday, we have multiple services. You know, after you've been with Pastor Benny Hinn for two weeks, you just want to pray for people. So I, 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 at the end of the final service, because our services move so quickly, you know, we got to move the people in, move the people out, and, and, and to get them all in there. And So finally, by the end of the last service, I was like, if I don't pray for somebody, I'm going to explode up in here. And the Holy Spirit moved into that packed sanctuary. And had me to call for people. It's real talk. 
I'm in Chicago. I'm not in the bougie suburbs. I'm in the trenches in Chicago where the crackheads are and the heifers are and where uh, folks are, the violence is and all the crazy stuff going on in Chicago. And the Holy Spirit said, call for everybody who's addicted to crack and heroin. Call them to come to the front to be delivered. They're going to be instantly set free. So I put it out to the congregation. I said, listen, you're in a place where there's no judgment. There's no judgment. I don't care if you're addicted to pain pills. I don't care if you're addicted to crack. I don't care if you're addicted to heroin. The Jesus that I know since I was preaching the gospel since 16 years old. God, I feel like running right here. I said, the Jesus I know doesn't need a warm up session he can instantly deliver you is there anybody in here tonight knows about the delivering power of the Holy Ghost have you ever been delivered of anything in your life instantly Jeez. Reggie you don't know me son you may push me I'll be in the middle of the 405 if we're still near it stay right there but brother you, you my man right there Reggie you my man right hey careful careful you don't know you don't know you don't know me do you know the first girl came running up? Folks came running from everywhere in that sanctuary. And Sister Jean, the first girl came running down the aisle. She was a first time guest to our church. Skinny as a, as a rail, you could tell what addiction had just done to her. And she came and tears were pouring down her face. And by the time she got up on the stage, already the yoke had been broken. It had been destroyed. She got up from that place. Her mind was clear. And I got an email today that said for the first time in five years, she just went 24 hours. Now that may not be much for you to rejoice about, but she said she hadn't been clean for five years for a 24-hour period. Today was the first 24-hour period she was clean. I th I know I'm in L.A. I need to simmer down a little bit. But my grandmother used to say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, I don't know your testimony. I don't know what you've been through. I can't praise Him on your testimony. But I can tell you, when I was laying in a hospital bed 30 years ago, and they sliced me from the top of my ear nine inches down my throat and took three tumors off of my vocal cords. And they said, when you come out of this surgery, your face will be paralyzed. When you come out of this surgery, you won't be able to sing and preach anymore. Do you hear me when I tell you that was 35 years ago? And I'm running for my life! Jesus! I wish somebody would just holler like you're from Chicago one time. Jesus! Security. So I still got a little overflow. Could I preach about 23? Son. Woo! And every time I feel like giving up, all I got to do is take myself back to that place where I'm laying on the gurney. And I remember that nurse when I woke up. She weighed about three and a quarter. <laughs> True story. And she was hovering over me doing IVs and stuff. And I remember the first thing I said to her was, is my face paralyzed? She was so gruff and ugly, but she looked beautiful to me in that moment. She was leaning over me, pulling IVs, and I said, Ma'am, is my face paralyzed? Can I talk? She said, Shut up. It seems like you're doing a pretty good job to me. I said, That's the most beautiful words I ever heard in my life. And every time I think about walking away from God, every time I think I can't do it anymore, I'll just throw in the towel. I go back and I lay back down and I think of the goodness of Jesus, how He delivered me, how He set me free. I wish I had three people just to shout, thank the Lord. Pastor Benny, he going to get us all in trouble tonight. So all the way here today, Pastor Jim, I was thinking, Holy Spirit, what would you want me to tell your people tonight? Because what I know is that somebody in this room, you're going through your own struggle. And that's the reason you came tonight. The reason.
reason that you pushed your way to be here was because you said just maybe the hem of his garment will be in the room tonight. Let me tell you all day what the Holy Spirit was giving me. If you just give me 23 minutes, I promise you it won't be too much longer than that because Papa needs a cheeseburger. Okay? <laughs> they ain't ate all day. But I feel the anointing right now. <laughs> I'm a lover of the land of Israel. How many love Israel? If you love Israel, let me see. Do you love Israel? I've been seven times. In fact, I'm getting ready to go for my eighth time lead, uh, to, to Israel. And would you believe while I was in South Africa, Pastor Benny and I were talking. We are going to Israel the same exact dates and didn't even know we were each going to Israel in November at the same exact dates. I said, God is up to something. With God is up to something. Well, did you know that in Israel right now, this is the year of Jubilee? Yeah. Do you, you all know that? To understand, to understand why. You know, when we, we Americans, we think of Jubilee, we think of joy. And that's all right, but let me exegete it for a moment from the Torah, from the Old Testament, from, from the Word of God. Can I preach up in here just for a few minutes here tonight? If you will, in the Old Testament, the, the Jewish Torah, the, the Old Testament law taught the people of Israel that there would be cycles, that things would move in cycles. God moved in numbers. God liked numbers. And, and he chose the number seven. I don't have time to take you real deep. Pastor Benny can do that when he gets back. But uh, God said, I'll move in seven year cycles. Seven means completion, that it'll be something is over in seven years. So he he called a seven year cycle he called it a cycle of Shemitah if you will and in that cycle of seven years six years they would work the land and the seventh year they would let the land breathe they would let it rest well kind of like a Sabbath they would make that last year like a Sabbath you understand we're instructed to have six days we work and the seventh day we are to let it be a Sabbath so it means the conclusion of a week well when seven years are completed God said it'll be a cycle of seven it called a Shemitah in the Jewish calendar. Now God said what would happen is we'll start another cycle of seven years. And if you will I, I don't know, let's see, there's three, six uh, three, six. Would you six just stand right here right, real quickly? Would you six just mind come standing right here? And Reggie so you come off that keyboard and not push me anymore. Just make a straight line. I need seven of you, okay? Uh, seven of you. Now now, what God said in his word would make us, make a, make a, come, come this way Reggie. A few of you guys come up on stage so it's a straight line of seven. There you go. You're perfect. There you go. Come on in brother. Okay, so here's a cycle of seven years. There's the first Shemitah. Here's a cycle of seven years. Here's a cycle of seven. Here's a cycle of seven. Here's a cycle of seven. As each cycle of seven years finishes, we start the next cycle of seven years. Well, when the seventh cycle is over, now I'm a product of CPS, Chicago Public Schools, but I still learned how to do a little arithmetic. Now, my, oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost pushing me right here. When you have seven cycles of seven years, would somebody tell me how many total years that is oh y'all you're as good in LA as we are in Chicago seven cycles of seven years is 49 years so God said here's what I'm going to do when you get to the end of the 49th year when the seventh cycle is over and that seventh cycle of Shemitah has been concluded 49 years God said in the 50th year we're going to call this year the year of Jubilee and, and wait a minute wait a minute y'all you don't know me you, it just takes a little hand clap and I'll be running around this studio and God said in the 50th year what I'm going to do we're going to call it the year of Jubilee and basically let me just put it in simple terms that I can understand and I'll drag you along with me if you'd like to go in the 50th year God said everything Thing you could not get done in those 49 years tell you what we'll do in the 50th year it will not be by might or by power but it'll be by my spirit and what you could not do I'll do it in the Lord have mercy in the year of Jubilee guess what kids this is the year of Jubilee in Israel y'all can sit down So, to understand, well, what's that got to do with me, Pastor Dan? Well, 
God said, in the 50th year, in the year of Jubilee, I'm going to do seven things for you. Read the book of Joel, the second chapter. Go back to the book of Leviticus. Seven things that God said He will do. His Shekinah glory of God would show up. His presence would walk with you. The parakletos. All you do is turn around and say, Holy Ghost, how you doing today? Tell you what I'd like you to do. Move that traffic out the way from me if you would. Boom! And the Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, he walks with... Anybody remember when the old saints used to sing, He walks with with me and he talks with me uh, and so he said the Shekinah glory of God this is the year you're going to feel the presence of God like you never felt it in your life before I don't have time to preach on all seven of them double portion this would be the year of double portion this would be the year of miracles this would be the year of family restoration oh God have mercy so seven things things but the seventh one is the one all day today God was telling me to just talk to you for a hot minute about up in here tonight the seventh blessing of Jubilee comes from the book of Deuteronomy the 28th chapter if you have your Bible Deuteronomy 28 and 12 if you don't have it I'll read it for you anyway I got you tonight Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 12 the Bible says the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure the heaven you ought to take your pen your pencil your highlighter your mac mascara and you want to underline the word the heaven God would open the heavens to give the rain unto thy land in his season and to bless all the work of thy hand and thou shalt oh God here it comes thou shalt lend unto many nations and thou shalt not borrow so before I just lose it up here let me tell you what happens when an open heaven shall up. The seventh blessing of Jubilee is an open heaven. When an open heaven shows up, you become the lender and not the borrower. In other words, instead of you calling the bank, folks call you because you are the bank. Oh, God have mercy. Don't push. Don't push. You don't know. So, an open heaven. I wish you would just kind of Lutheran slap the person next to you and tell them it's an open heaven year. It's an open heaven year. Uh, it, don't pin a Pentecostal slap them. You'll knock them out the chair. Just kind of Lutheran touch them, all right? It's an open heaven here. You understand? It's an open heaven. So what is an open heaven? What is an open heaven? Well, when God created Adam and Eve, you understand, do you know that God's plan was to be able to walk in the garden in the cool of the day? God didn't want to be separated from Adam and Eve. God wanted to be looked down from heaven. Now, let me just, let me oversimplify it. Don't judge me for not being real religious here right now. I just came back from South Africa. I'm still a little uh, out there, okay? But God's plan was always this. To just look down from heaven to Adam and Eve and say, how are you doing today? Everything good? How you like the garden down there? And Adam and Eve, just to be able to walk with him in the cool of the day. Nothing to obstruct and open heaven. That was always God's plan. But just like I've jacked it up and you've jacked it up, sin always creeps in and creates closure. If you will, the term used in the Bible later on is the heavens became brass because of sin. Heavens became brass. You can blame it on your mama. You can blame it on what your ex-husband did to you. But the truth of the matter is a heaven closes up on you because of the sin in your own life. In my own life, I know preachers don't talk about it too much, but I'm going to talk about it just for a moment here tonight. Sin will always create a closed heaven, a locked up heaven if you will, where the heavens feel like brass. And this is where agnosticism is born and atheism is born and unbelievers are nourished and backsliders start flourishing because they start feeling like God, I pray it and you're not talking to me. You ain't saying nothing. You're not answering me, God. Why aren't you talking to me? It feels like the heavens are brass. Before I move one step from here, am I the only person in this room that's ever felt like the heavens were brass? That God was not listening to me? I've gone through moments in my life where I felt like, God, are you even there? Are you listening to me? And it found that, that it was not God was not listening, but the things that I had allowed to creep into my life had created closure. They had locked up the heavens, if you will. And everything I felt like I was saying was not getting through. So God said in the year of Jubilee, one of the blessings will be an 
open heaven. What that means is that when the heavens open, every prayer you pray, nothing is going to be able to stop it. It will be unobstructed and the microphone will be on and it will go straight up to the ears of the Lord. Everything you talk to Him, nothing can hinder it. So let me come back. In Matthew, the 16th chapter, the 19th verse, the Lord said, I give to you the keys to the kingdom. Am I right about it? And the Message Bible finishes that up by saying, here's what the key is. A yes on earth, if any of you have the Message Bible, you can see this. A yes on earth is a yes in heaven. A no on earth is a no in heaven. Many of us get the game twisted because we think God is saying no. God only says no in response to our no. When we say, yes, Lord, I'll pray. Yes, Lord, I'll give. Yes, Lord, I'll serve you with my whole heart. Then God says, yes to you. Yes to me. But when we say, no, God, I've been through enough now. I can't take anymore. I'm not giving anymore. I've heard enough. God, I'm not. A no on earth becomes a no in heaven. And the heavens get locked up. You can scream against it. You can cry against it. You can blame everybody in your life against it. But if you have something that is locked, tell me what do you need? You need a You need a key. Do you not know? Do you not know that I came home? I came home from South Africa with Pastor Benny a couple of days ago. And this is where the sermon was born. I came home with and had forgot my keys. And my wife was not home. My sweetheart of 38 years, the first girl I ever kissed 38 years ago. And I kissed her real good before I left today. Because it had to last her for 24 hours. And, and I lost my key and, and my phone was dead. I couldn't call my wife. And when you're standing at a locked door and you're tired, you got a couple choices. You can cuss the lock. Now, I didn't cuss the lock. I didn't. Really? So... Uh, you can kick the lock, you can talk to the, you can slap the lock, but that's not what will open the door. You need a key that will open the door. Have you ever, am I the only one who's ever thrown keys away that I didn't know what they were for? Y'all ever threw them away? You know when you discover what they were for? The day after you threw them away. Then you say, that's what those keys were for. Well, you may not need these keys tonight. I'm about to, I'm about to drop on your head. You may not need them tonight, but hold on, boo-boo. You're going to need them in a couple of weeks. I don't know when you're going to need an open heaven, but you better pay attention tonight because I'm going to give you four quick keys. I don't care if you got to write them down on your jeans. Write it down. Get it. If you don't have no paper, write it on your hand. Get these four keys that come from the word of God to create an open heaven. Everybody in this room say, I need an open heaven. Well, there are about, Brother Reggie, about four open heavens in the scripture. About four open heavens. The first one, the first open heaven is in Genesis, the 28th chapter. And Bible readers, I don't have time to take you through all of, the, all of these as deep as I'd like to go, but let's just go here quickly. If you recall in Genesis chapter 28, it's the story of Jacob. Anybody remember the story of Jacob on the ladder? Is this strong enough to hold me? Anybody know? Do I dare try this? Do I dare try this? No, no, don't try it. Okay, I'm not going to try it. I don't need to be told twice. Everything I get on, I ask, what's the weight limit on it? Because you know I... It, it, one of those things could happen. So Jacob, you remember the story of Jacob? He has a vision of a ladder. And somebody talk back to me. This is interactive church tonight. What was going up and down the ladder? Angels, were they were traversing up and down the ladder. God, I feel like preaching here right now. And so the angels were going up and down the ladder. Later this place would be called Bethel. And you recall Jacob's head is laying on a stone for a rock. And he has this vision. The angels, watch, watch, pay attention now. They are going up and down a ladder. The ladder is on earth, but it extends all the way to It was an open heaven. The angels were going in and out of heaven. It is an open heaven. But before he had an open heaven vision, the first thing that had to happen with him was he wrestled with 
an angel. Lord, could I preach this one second? Come here, Brother Reggie. You're in the hot spot tonight. Now, understand, Jacob, right before the heavens open, right before the open heaven, because that's what I'm talking about, right before the open heaven, and he sees the angels, he wrestles with an angel. And he tells this angel, I will not let you go. I, you ain't going nowhere. Shut the doors. I will not let you go till you bless me. He would not let that angel go. Do you know what Jacob did? Jacob had faith before faith was even invented. Faith wasn't even invented. And Jacob said, you ain't going nowhere till you bless me. I want to give you the first key for an open heaven. You will never have an open heaven till you get your faith back. Some of us used to have faith. But life comes and it breaks us. Some of you used to lay hands on people yourself. And you used to cast devils out. Some of you pastors used to lay hands on the sick and they recovered. But life can hit you hard. And things and dreams that you had did not work out. And the enemy comes to take your faith faith away. I don't care if you say, oh my God, or look at me strange. I'm going to preach this thing just for one second. Because you and I go through struggles that cause us to question our faith. That cause our faith to be debilitated. I've gone through mountaintop experiences in my life where I just felt like God have mercy. I'm on top of the mountain. My faith is so hard. And then when the streets of Chicago grabbed my 14 year old son and and drug him into drug addiction and caused him to disappear from our family at 14 years old and I'm a pastor I'm a preacher all my kids know is singing and shouting and praising God but my only son was in the streets strung out on drugs rebellious caring not about the things of God and hating me my faith was broken The flip side to that, I'll, I'll tell you that real quick so I don't leave you hanging. I got my faith back. And when I got my faith back, here's what I had to do. Remember the story of Hansel and Gretel? Remember they dropped crumbs? Remember the story? Well, I want to look at all y'all tonight. I want to call all the brothers Hansel. I want to call all the sisters Gretel. Listen to me, Hansel and Gretel. If you lost your faith, you're going to have to crawl back down the lane and find the places where your faith fell and was broken and pick up the crumbs that are left there. You may not get the whole big thing, but get the crumbs back of your faith. My son stood in the hallway that night Days went by, months went by. We went through this for several years. And one night he stood in the hallway of our home when the police brought him there, six feet tall, threw his shoulders at me and said, Preacher man, you may as well get used to it. Your son, the preacher's son, is going to prison. And I'll never forget looking at him and saying, No, what you don't know is I just went to an altar the other day. I sowed a seed on the altar. This is why folks don't have to hype me up about seed sowing I said my seed is speaking louder than your words are speaking do you hear me yesterday when I finished preaching those services in Chicago and my son who's now 26 years old married got two children a United States Marine a licensed mortician when he came up off of the front row to take the microphone to lead prayer and to start casting devils out and praying for the sick because now he's one of the prayer ministers of our church do you hear me I got my faith back and when you get your faith back nothing shall be impossible nothing for with God all things are possible first open heaven comes when you get your faith back second open heaven have I got five more minutes sister Linda have I got five six all right, okay. All right, brother man said, yeah, I can keep on going. All right. If Pastor Benny calls and tells me, shut it down, I can wrap it up real quick, okay? But here's the second open heaven. Go to the book of Acts, the ninth chapter. I don't have time to exegete it, but you can just write down the reference. Do you remember a man whose name was changed after a conversion? Talk to me, somebody. What was his name? Saul. Saul was on the road to Damascus. Do you know what he was going to do? He was going to kill the Christians. I know we, in our happy world, we don't like to think about somebody, somebody was trying, what? They were trying to kill the Christians? Uh -huh. Saul was yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter. 
He's trying to devise means. Now, I think I don't know if he had a list and he said, we'll chop the first ten heads off. The next ten we'll hold them underwater. The next ten we'll put in hot oil. I don't know how Saul was trying to figure it out. When suddenly, don't miss this, boom, the heavens opened and a bright light shined. And Saul has a conversion and his name was changed to Paul, there on that Damascus road, he says, Lord, Lord, he has a, watch it, he has a repentance experience. You will never have an open heaven by naming it and claiming it alone. You're going to have to have a place of repentance. Repentance. If you're ever going to have an open heaven, you're going to have to make an altar somewhere and have a place of repentance in your life. You know why we don't repent in church anymore? I, I'm, I, I, I've been a pastor 38 years. So y'all, I only know how to preach like a pastor. You know why we don't have repentance in churches anymore? Because we're not coven- we don't understand covenant anymore. We don't understand covenant marriage. Folks are in marriages. They don't understand covenant. I tell people all the time, I'm not in the wedding business. If you want somebody just to marry you in Chicago, go find somebody. But if you're interested in a covenant marriage, a covenant wedding, what is a covenant wedding? Well, it's till death do you part. It is whither thou goest, I will go. Where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people. Thy God, my God. Where thou diest, I will die. Where thou art buried, there will I be buried. But you ain't going nowhere. I am in covenant with you. Covenant simply means this. Attachment. The reason we don't repent is because we're no longer attached to God. We're simply attracted to God. Maybe maybe y'all don't have this in, in LA. But in Chicago we got a lot of folks that come to church on Sunday because they're attracted. They like the music. Oh, the music of Pastor Dan's church. Oh, they like the dancers. They like, we got a big, we just built a new church. We have a gigantic screen. It's 50 feet wide and 30 feet long. It's 200 HD televisions all put together. It's amazing. I look like a gigantic Texan cow when they throw me up on there. It is just the most massive thing. That's the thing I didn't think about when we were building that screen, what I would look like when I was on that screen. And so folks come and they like that screen and they like the music you understand and they like the dancers and they like the exhilaration of the worship but when it's time for the preaching when it's time for repentance oh no no no, you know it ain't that deep for me I ain't you know I'll see y'all at Denny's after service is over they have an attraction but not an attraction Attachment. This is where a lot of mar- uh, young ladies get in trouble because they have a man in their sphere. Is this all right to say tonight? They let a man in their sphere who just has an attraction to them, but no attachment. Attachment. It's just a one night call. It's just an attraction. He likes the way I look. Yes, baby, but he has no attachment to you. Because as soon as the kids get sick, he's like, oh, I, I, I ain't all about that. When the bills are due on Friday, he's not about that. He has an attraction, but no attachment. Attachment. Do you understand? We got people that come to churches and pastors are trying to pastor people who are not in covenant. They're trying to please them and make sure don't leave my church, don't leave my church. And they're wearing themselves out and they're traumatized and pastors are falling over dead because they're trying to get people in covenant who are only interested in attraction and not attachment. The only way you're ever attached is through repentance. Take me back, God. I don't know how y'all got saved. But I got saved. I got saved under my mother. You know, for a long time, I didn't know whether the Lord had called me to preach or my mother. I got an old school mother. And Pastor Benny, when he was talking about his mother tonight, God, how he reminded me to treasure. My mother is 80 years old. She is full-time on my staff. She can outrun any 20-year-old woman you've ever seen. In fact, she thinks every 20-year-old woman is lazy because they can't keep up with her. Ah, they don't even know how to do it. Let me just do it myself. She's over our 24-hour prayer ministry. And my mother is old school. She believes, I mean, she's still got the beehive up to here and the dress down to the floor. She, holy, holy, holy. When I walk in her presence, I just say, holy. Holy, holy, holy. My mother, I love, just kidding. But I love her to life. But my mother, when, she, when, when I got saved, I'll never forget, I was a six-year-old boy. 
I didn't repent till I thought I was finished. I had to repent till my mother thought I was finished. <laughs> she taught me how to repent. Thank God I've been delivered. We used to have to repent every day. Thank God I've been delivered from a lot of guilt and shame that that kind of, of stuff brought on me. But there's something to be said about going back to that place. Saul got an open heaven because of repentance. The third open heaven. The third open heaven happened in Malachi chapter 3. Fasten your seatbelt. I'm going for 42,000 feet now. We're getting in the final stretch now. The third open heaven happened in Malachi 3. Sometimes I hear pastors receive offerings and they're like they apologize for it. I don't understand that mentality because giving creates an open heaven heaven. Do you understand? I get more excited at giving time than probably anybody in the church because some folks are like this. Here we go. What you expect out of a preacher? Churches, pastors. I'm, I've never been that way because I learned, well, I, I learned that giving creates an open heaven. Malachi 3.10. Come on, Bible readers. Bring all of the tithe into the storehouse. And then the Bible says, prove me now herewith, Lord have mercy. See if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you can't even receive when you when you understand that giving creates an open heaven you will never look at the ministry of giving anymore like you used to look at it when it's time to give in any particular dynamic or structure or sanctuary or situation when it's giving time I'm the first one I'm always like just say how much I got my checkbook I'm ready to go because here's what my wife and I learned there was a time in our life Adlin my wife and I had 23 credit cards maxed to the top to the top we couldn't even charge two dollars at White Castle White Castle that's my place you know about White Castle Woo! two cheeseburgers a hard fried onion ring and a vanilla shake you, you know Jesus is in that right there That's how Jesus rolls right there, White Castle. We couldn't even charge a, a, a cheeseburger at White Castle. We had, and we did it all. Watch this. We did it all for ministry. We were trying to build a church and trying to... And one day the Lord said to me, I don't care what you did it for. You got to get out of debt now. My wife and I discovered... This is 15, 17 years ago. So gee, my wife and I discovered... We were as into poverty... As, um, as though it was fashionable. I mean, we just carried poverty. I, my wife had some fake Gucci purses, but folks thought they were real Gucci purses. But we had them duct taped on the inside, so we looked good. Don't play. Some of you got some stuff duct taped up in here tonight. I'll call names. Don't play. And we were in poverty trying to make everybody think we were, and we were struggling. We didn't, seriously, I, it's easy to make light of it when you come through it now. But then we were dying and I had three daughters and a baby son and we're trying to figure our way out and God stuck to me. Giving creates an open heaven that when you give, I'll open the windows of heaven and I'll pour it out on you. I stand here tonight to tell you, don't hate on my favor, yo. Don't hate on my favor. My wife and I started giving like we'd never given before. I was in South Africa with Pastor Benny for the last two weeks. Every time Pastor Benny was time for the ministry of giving, I had my checkbook. I'm just like, how much Pastor Benny? How much? Why? Because I've learned there is a principle. We had 23 credit cards to the top. Can I look you in the eyes and tell you that was 15 years ago? We gave our way out of poverty. We don't owe anybody anything. We don't have a house payment. We don't have a car payment. We don't have a credit card payment. Nothing. None of it whatsoever. Well, how did it happen? I didn't take a church. I didn't take a raise from the church I pastor for the last 19 years to this day. I make from our church the same thing I made for 19 years. I only can explain it this way. When I began seed sowing, supernatural increase came into my life. I was singing one place one time. How's my 23 minutes? Am, am I alright, Dad? Am I good? All right, y'all take it up with him. He keeps giving me a, you got it, son. You got it. You got it. I'm going for it, Dad. I was singing in a place one time, Sister Pat. This is how God works. Elevation always comes when you're just doing 
what you're supposed to be doing. A lot of folks are waiting for Kirk Franklin to call them. And they don't want to sing in their local church choir. They're just waiting for a big gig. Kirk ain't never calling you till you get faithful in your own church. Okay, well, that went over. Thank you. Thank you, honey. Do it again. Just keep it going right there. Thank you. All right. And stop. That's good. Thank you. But seriously, I have people in my congregation, and I think they think, well, I, I just don't get involved in a, in a church because I'm just waiting on big stuff. Every big thing that's ever happened for me, please hear me, came while I was doing all the little stuff Amen. I was just supposed to be doing. I didn't even know anybody was watching. Everybody keeps asking me, how did you get hooked up with Pastor Benny Hinn? I don't know because we haven't slowed down long enough to decide. It was six months ago I got a phone call. I'm like, how do you even know me? I'm just a kid in Chicago. And now we can't let each other go. We haven't even stopped to talk about how we found each other. I only know one way. Everything that's come in my life has been because God was watching and He was recording in secret every time I was giving. Hear, hear me, hear me. I was singing one night somewhere. And in the audience, little church, this is... So 25 years ago, I was singing in a little church, probably 50 people. You hear me, Blondie? You hear me? Can y'all, you, can, can, wait, what do you hear this? I'm singing like 50 people, and I'm just singing. The Lord will make a way somehow. Do you remember that song, uh, Pastor Jim? When beneath the load you bow, He will lift your heavy burden. And I was just singing my little heart out. And after church, a man came up to me, tapped me on the shoulder, and said, I'm in town. I had some business to take care of and I just wanted to go to church somewhere tonight and I came here to hear, came here for the service I don't even know nobody who are you I said I'm I, Pastor Dan Willis from a little church in Chicago he said I am Dr. Leonard Scott the owner of the Ty Scott Recording Company the largest African American owned recording business in the world he said and I've never signed a white boy to this record label but I want to sign you to my record label tonight I recorded seven CDs and spent 15 years with the man do you understand why because I was just singing when I didn't know anybody else was listening favor comes when you're faithful in that which is least and God is watching you. Many of you in here tonight have done things that were recorded but never rewarded. Mordecai, Esther's cousin, Haman wanted to kill him. He hated him. Haman is building gallows and guillotine to hang the brother from when one night the king could not sleep. And he calls for the book of the Chronicles to come and be read to him. A late night bedtime story. And they open it up and they began to read to the king. And they come across a story and they said, There's some, somebody named Mordecai who blocked two guys who wanted to kill you. And the king said, Well, who's Mordecai? Well, we don't know. Probably some country guy out in the streets there. And the king said, What did he want to do? Well, he wanted to kill you. I don't know if that meant he wanted to po these two guys wanted to poison the king, what they wanted to do. And the king said, and somebody named Mordecai blocked them? And they said, yes. And the king said, Haman, come here. I see Haman running in, dusting the sawdust because he's building the gallows to hang Mordecai from. And he runs in, yes, king. And the king says to him, listen, I got a question that only a wise man like you could answer. Listen, what should I do to the man who I want to honor like nobody I've ever honored before? Haman in his self-righteous because pride goes before destruction. Haman thinks, oh, <laughs> here it comes. It's going down. Boom. I'm about to be elevated now. And he turns to the king and he says, Well, since you asked, <laughs> tell you what I think you should do. Put a royal robe on them. Put a ring on their finger. Put them on a horse and have a great man lead them through the city saying, This is the man in whom the king delights to honor. And the king said to Haman, 
That's an awesome idea. There's a man outside named Mordecai. Would you get a horse, put him on it, put a robe on it and a ring on it and get him through the street saying, this is the man in whom the king delights to honor. You all know the story, but hear me. Theologians estimate that story occurred seven years before anybody ever read it in the Chronicles. Recorded! but not rewarded. But the time came to be rewarded. Look at me, because I ain't playing with you. The Holy Spirit tonight told me to look you in the eyes and tell you, I couldn't hardly wait to get off that plane while I go to get over here. I came just as I am without one plea. This is how I rode on an airplane while I go. I came just as I am without one plea. Because the Holy Ghost said, come and look them in the eye and tell them what you've done for God. So many times you felt like nobody, nobody got it, nobody understood, and you weren't as good as somebody. Oh God, the Holy Ghost is about to wipe me out right here. You thought you didn't do it as good. You didn't sing as good. You didn't play as good. You didn't preach as good. You didn't serve as good. You didn't give as much. Nobody even acknowledged that you had done anything. But hear me, hear me, hear me. This is the season of open heaven where what's been recorded is about to be rewarded. Somebody ought to clap their hands to God. What's been recorded is about to be rewarded. Is there anybody here that is ready for the book of the Chronicles to be read and for God to be able to reward what you've done in secret? He's ready to reward openly. Here's the fourth one. Come back to me now, Reggie. Don't push me too hard. I learned Pastor Benny the last two weeks, didn't we, Adlin? Boy, when Pastor Benny, he just goes like this. They bring it up when he goes like this. They have to come down. I went home all weekend. My band didn't even know what I was doing. I was like this. They were like, what? Hallelujah. It was so fun. I love you, Pastor. You changed my life. Pastor Benny is probably... There's no hype. I don't do hype. I don't have to, I, I don't need to do hype. I'm from Chicago. I'm not looking for another gig. So it doesn't make, I, I just, this is the truth. Pastor Benny is probably the wisest theologian I've ever met in my life. He's probably the wisest theologian. I, I get so, because you can't say jealous if you're a Christian. So what do I get of you guys on Monday night when I'm in Chicago and you guys get to be here? I get jealous, all right? It's just, but I learned the second open heaven is repentance, so I always repent after it. You guys don't even know how blessed you really are. You are so, oh my heavens. You are so blessed. Pastor Benny, I felt like I was sitting at the feet of Gamaliel every night. Because you know, Pastor Benny, everybody was asking me, is he, does he, is he a night owl or a day owl? But he's everything. I don't know when he sleeps. We'd be sitting there at three in the morning and he'd be like, Captain Dan? He'd call me Captain. Captain Dan, one more story. I would try to sneak for the door. <laughs> Captain Dan? Miss Marie, everybody would be laughing. I'd say, yes, Pastor Vinny. One more story. I was so blessed getting to learn at his feet. But hear me tonight. Hear me tonight when I tell you this in this year of open heaven. Pastor Benny, I know that you've done a lot that's been recorded and not yet rewarded. But there's some of us in this room tonight that we're with you, sir. You're a man of God that we love, respect, and honor. I never met a man more integral, more honorable, more wise in the word of God. And hear me. God, the Holy Ghost is moving in this place. The fourth open heaven actually... Okay, the first three I thought of. The fourth one, Pastor Benny taught me this one two weeks ago. The fourth open heaven happened in Matthew chapter 3. Do you remember when Jesus was baptized? And the heavens, remember that? And a voice came out of heaven and said, This is my beloved son in whom I'm... Did the heavens open? Yes, the heavens opened. Well, Pastor Benny was preaching one night and he said these words. This is amazing. I, 
So I don't get no credit for this. This is Pastor Benny's words. If you came to hear Pastor Benny's words, this is it right here. He said, when the heavens opened and that voice cried out, a few days later, Jesus and the devil were up in a mountain. Remember that? And the devil said, Hey, if thou be the Son of God, hold up, devil. What do you mean, if? You were there the night I got baptized. Because you're always there when folks get baptized. You heard the same thing I heard. The heavens opened and you heard a voice that said, If thou be the Son of God. Don't act like you don't know who I am. You know who I am. Pastor Benny said, Jesus never said that. I close with this. He said, Jesus never said those words because Jesus knew, don't you miss this, experience never defeats the devil. Only the word of God. Jesus didn't argue and say, let me tell you about my experience being baptized. You were there. You... Jesus just simply said, it is written. Brothers and sisters, the fourth open heaven will always involve the Word of God. For the Word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory, as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Heaven and earth shall pass away. These words, if you want an open heaven, I'm telling you, you're going to have to learn. There are four things that get an open heaven. Let's review and I'm done. Get your faith back, Hansel and Gretel. Find the crumbs of it and get your faith back. The second open heaven is, go back to repentance, Saul. Lord, what do you want from me? The third open heaven is you're going to have to learn. Giving creates an open heaven. And the fourth open heaven, God the Holy Spirit is in this place, will only come because the word of... <laughs> clear your hands of everything. As soon as you're finished taking that last note, clear <laughs> Before you even stand, could you just, while you're sitting, just repent. Take 30 or 45 seconds, close your eyes. and Pastor Jim, get a, get a mic and come. And I want you just to you're going to lead us in a little, just a, a moment of worship. <laughs> Create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew in me a right spirit. I know you need a healing. I know you need a, I know you need a financial miracle, but start with repentance. Because you really need an open heaven and it comes to repentance. God, forgive me. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow, Jesus. 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 <laughs> Sing something with the name of Jesus in it. Jesus, I need you. I need you, repentance. I need you. Forgive me, Father, creating me a clean heart. And renew in me a right spirit. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name. Pastor Jesus. 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 Jesus, you're the sweetest name of all. Yes, sing a pastor. Jesus, <laughs> would you always hear me when I call? When I call? <laughs> Jesus, would you lift me up each time I fall? He's in the room. You're He's in the room. The sweetest <laughs> Sweetest name. And only those that will on this next chorus listen. If you're ready to say, I'm going to collect up the fragments of my faith.
When you stand to your feet, I don't want you to stand until you're ready to throw your hands up to Jesus. And I want you to say, I'm going to get my faith back. They may have stole some of it from me and life may have broken it a little bit, but I'm going to find the crumbs and the pieces and I'm going to lift the pieces that I can find to you, God. I'm getting my faith back. Jump to your feet, raise your hands and throw them up to heaven. Tell God, open your voice and tell Him, I'm getting my faith back, God. I'm getting my faith back, God. Yes, God. Tell Him, tell Him, sing it, Pastor. Talk to Him about your faith. Jesus, you're the sweetest name Talk to Him about your faith. Talk to Him about your faith. Jesus, we call on you, sir. You always hear me. When I call, oh Jesus, don't you lift me up each time I fall? You're the sweet. Come on, from the front to the back, tell the Lord about your faith. Don't worry about who's near you. Tell the Lord about your faith. Tell Him I'm, I'm getting my faith back. Jesus, Lord, I believe you. You lift me up each time I fall. You're the sweetest, sweetest name of all. Could we sing, Lord, I believe all things are possible. We've come through repentance. And now we're getting our faith back. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I Come on, sigh and lift your voice and say, All things are possible. Lord, I
to grab that neighbor's hand on both sides of you. Keep it right there in the room. I want you to take 45 seconds and pray in the Holy Spirit for them to get their faith back. Ruba, lift up your voice and pray. You don't know what they may be going through. There may be cancer in somebody's body. There may be cancer in somebody's body. You never know what they may be going through. Ruba, Sunday, and You don't know the emotional situation, God. I feel the Holy Ghost faith level rising in this place. <laughs> Cry out to God. Say, God, let them get their faith back. I speak in the name of Jesus that your faith is being restored. I speak in the name of Jesus. No weapon that is formed against you can prosper. And every tongue that rises in judgment, the Lord shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Faith rise. That divorce did not take your faith. That disease did not take your faith. That pain did not take your faith. That trauma did not take your faith. Faith. That last battle did not take your faith, but healing, healing, healing. God, I feel the level rising. Take their hands and raise them. Raise the hands up. Raise the hands up. And I want you to give God 20 seconds of praise. Thank Him. Thank Him. Their faith is restored. Your faith is renewed. Your faith is energized. Your faith is lifted. Spirit of the living God, lift your faith. Lift your faith. Lift your faith. You can let go of their hands, but I want you to get that third open heaven right now. I want you to begin to quote the word of God. I tell you, open your mouth and quote it like you're a preacher. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Come on, take the sword of the Spirit. Get you an open heaven with your Bible. If you've got your Bible with you right now, pick up your Bible. Pick up your Bible if you've got it. Lift up your Bible if you've got it near you. Lift up your Bible. Use that word for the word is quick it's powerful it's sharper than any two-edged sword come on begin to quote it begin to lift up your voice hallelujah 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 our god reigns he is the king of kings and he is the lord of lords he is the alpha and he is the omega he is the beginning and he is the end he is jehovah chira that which is and which was which is to come he is the almighty with a vesture dipped in blood that says king of kings and lord of lords the word of god it will stand heaven and earth will pass away but the word i wish you'd take another 30 seconds and just use the word of god to cut your way through your situation use the word by his stripes I am healed by His stripes. Healing, healing flows. <laughs> Hold your Bible up and say, Heaven and earth. Say it, Heaven and earth may pass away. But this word, this word will stand forever. Put your Bible down and clap those hands to the Lord. You've got an open heaven. All right, now I want you to listen to me. Whatever you would ask God for if the heavens were not brass. Whatever you would ask God for if he was going, if it was going straight to his ears. I want you right now to forget who's next to you. The heavens are open. We declare and we decree. I want you to raise your hands to Jesus now and make your petition known. Tell him your need. Tell him. Tell him the spirit of the living God is in this room. Tell him what do you need. Tell him what do you 
you need? What do you need? What do you need? Have mercy. You ought to cry out to Him right now. Have mercy, thou son of David. Have mercy, thou son of David. There is an open heaven. The Word of God opens the heavens. Have mercy. Have mercy, O oh God. Oh God. Have mercy tonight, O oh God. Healing. Deliverance. Uh, deliverance is occurring. Deliverance is occurring. I can feel deliverance occurring in this room right now. Roba, out of your belly, rivers of living water shall flow. You will sing again. You will laugh again. You will have joy again. Your joy will be restored unto you. Your faith will rise again. Hallelujah. The heavens are open now. The heavens are open. I declare it over this sanctuary right now. Papa. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. That's it. The heavens are open. Take your time. Take your time. The heavens are open. <laughs> Heavens are open. The heavens are open. Rest in it now. I hear the Lord say, Rest in it. The heavens are open. declare and decree over I don't know there must be pastors in this room besides Pastor Jim and I I'm so sorry I do not know all of you by name but somehow I want to declare and decree over pastors tonight maybe you're not a pastor but you have a pastor open your hands up like a cup I want to declare and decree over you right now so to Jean, you declare for Pastor Danette right now. Would you do that for me? I want to declare and decree over every pastor in this room, God. There is an open heaven in your ministry. I want to declare and I want to decree over every pastor in this room. When you thought no one understood the struggle. The heavens are open, Mother. The heavens are open. Whew. The heavens are open, man of God. The Lord knew what you needed tonight. The heavens are open. Your ministry will flourish. Souls will be added to the kingdom of God. Healings will flow. Your attachment, even in this room tonight where the Holy Spirit is so powerful, it's palpable in this place. Fresh anointing. Yield it to the Lord. That's, that's right. Some of you right now can hardly even stand up. The presence of God is so thick in this place right now. Fresh anointing on you, man of God, woman of God. Messages that bring inspiration to the power of God. The Holy Spirit is in this place. I declare and I decree. Oh God. There is an open heaven in your life. This is the year of Jubilee. With an affirmation like you have not felt in the last six months. Open your eyes with your hands open. Look up to heaven and tell the Lord, This is my year of jubilee. 
I believe I am under an open heaven right now. I believe I am under an open heaven. All right, mama, I want you to pray for your children right now. I feel the Holy Ghost pushing me to pray over your children. Daddy, pray over your children. For the next 30 seconds, pray over your children. Spiritual warfare in this place. Pray over your children. There's an open heaven. Call your kids' names. Come on, call them out. Call them out. Call your kids' names. Call them. Call their names. Call their names. Call their names. Call your children's names. Call your children's names. Hey, hey, my God. My God. Move, Holy Ghost. Move, Holy Ghost. Move, Holy Ghost. Move, Holy Ghost. Yeah. Ha. I hear the Lord say Stephanie is going to be touched. I don't know who that is, but Stephanie is going to be touched in the name of Jesus. God, touch her wherever she's at tonight. Touch her in the name of Jesus. Somebody in here has a... 34 year old child that's been a backslider since they were a teenager but there's an open heaven God we call we call that grown son back to holiness we call him to righteousness under an open heaven get him God reach them Wind of the Holy Ghost, blow, blow. Blow, Holy Ghost. There it is. Can you feel that? My God, there is a rushing mighty wind in this room right now. Cancer, I command you to go back to the pit of hell. Diabetes, I command you to go back to the pit of hell. Arthritis, I command you to go back to the pit of hell. Every ulcer, I command you to go back to the pit of hell. Every spinal condition, every every inflamed joint, I command in the name of Jesus, Satan, the Lord, rebuke you by His stripes. Healing, healing. There it is. My God, somebody just received another healing. There's healing. It breathes in this room. Healing angels live in this room healing 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 is flowing down <laughs> beloved there is a release in my spirit I've been preaching 38 years and I want you to know something there is a release in my spirit I have felt very few times like I feel in this holy place. I don't know if I'm over time, Sister Linda. I'm sure I'm over time. I'm, am I okay from... All right. Beloved, I don't even know if I'm supposed to really do this, but here we... Can, can I do this? There is a fourth open heaven that I talked to you about tonight. When I was sitting there when I came in tonight, Pastor Jim, I told you I felt like this was just a big arm of love around Pastor Benny tonight. People loving on Pastor Benny in his moment. He's been there for all of us when we needed him. If I ever, ever had a desire to bless someone and especially because it's the year of Jubilee and an open heaven comes through giving I don't even know Pam is it alright if I do this I, I just feel like in the word of God there are four open heavens the first open heaven was when Jacob wrestled with an angel and said I won't let you go till you bless me Angels up and down that ladder descending and ascending to heaven and open heaven. He got his faith back. I won't let you go till you bless me. You got to get your faith back. 
pick up the crumbs, Hansel and Gretel. Go get the crumbs and get your faith back. The second open heaven, Saul on the road to Damascus. The heavens open in a bright light. What, Lord, is that you? Saul had a repentance and was converted to Paul. You got to get in covenant with God. And covenant makes you repent. That third open heaven. Bring the tithes and the offering into the storehouse and prove me. See if I will not open the windows of heaven. I want you to know that fourth open heaven is the word of God. Jesus used it against the enemy. He didn't use his experience. He used the word. It is written. The heavens open. This is my beloved son. The word of God will always be a part of an open heaven. But tonight I am under a heavy anointing. I'm under a heavy anointing to talk to you. I want to talk to every person in this place right now. Every person watching. Somehow my spirit, I feel like there's people watching all over the world tonight. We have a divine appointment. And open heaven comes. I know God's proven it to me too many times. You could be seated in this place just for a moment. Watch her. The anointing is on that young lady. She's about to fall on the floor. Ruba, Sandira and open heaven comes when we give to the Lord. Get away from anybody in your life. Get away from them who says, well, churches and pastors, run, run from them. I have learned. I gave my way out of poverty. 23 credit cards maxed to the top my wife and I had. Today we are debt free, have been for 15, 17 years because we gave our way to an open heaven. It's your opportunity now. I'm going to ask every person in this place tonight, if I ever wanted to love on Pastor Benny, if I ever wanted to bless him, I'm going to tell you, it's tonight. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say, who'll do 500, who'll do 1,000, who, I don't even know if I'm really supposed to even be doing this. But we're going to do it tonight. If y'all don't see me ever come back here, you'll know I wasn't supposed to do this. But we're going to do this tonight. We're going to bless. We're going to bless the man of God, the house of God, and in my own life, in your life, we're going to create an open heaven through our giving. I'm going to ask every per person in this place tonight. I, I, again, I'm so out of order right now, I may as well just keep flowing. I'm going to ask every person in this place that is able to sow tonight a $1,000 seed into this ministry. I believe if there was ever a moment that this ministry needs you, it's now. Pastor Benny has been here for all of us and I'm going to ask you to do it. You say, Pastor Dan, I can't do that much. No judgment. But you listen to the Lord. Do every man purpose in your heart what you can do. Purpose. But I want it to be something that when you leave here tonight, you say, Hallelujah. I left seed in the house that's creating an open heaven. This is your moment. This is your moment to get an open heaven created. This is the moment to get an open heaven created. Now, Holy Spirit, I'm going to ask you to talk to every person's heart. I, I've never, in 38 years of being a pastor, I've never twisted arms. I've never begged people. I've just always said, here's what I think the Holy Spirit is saying. And Holy Spirit, tonight you told me that there are people watching and there are people in this sanctuary that will sow a $1,000 seed into this ministry. So Lord, I call to them. I claim it in the name of Jesus. And they will have an open heaven. I declare it. I decree it in the name of Jesus. And then, Father, in the name of Jesus, for every person in this sanctuary, every person in this sanctuary that needs an open heaven, that they will say, Father, I'm going to plant a seed that when I drive away tonight, when I leave this program, I'm going to be able to say for the next 24 hours, I've got seed in the ground that's creating an open heaven. I want you right now to listen to the Holy Spirit. This is the final thing. and I'm going to let you, let you go. Holy Spirit, talk to every heart now. You're changing some numbers around. Because you're telling me there's, there's some folks that they couldn't do a thousand, but they can do a 50 jubilee. 50 is jubilee. Maybe you want to consider 50. A 50 jubilee seed. What is the best seed you can leave on this altar? What is the best seed that you can leave on this altar? Father, I thank you. I feel such joy in my heart because I learned. I gave my way to an open heaven. And I 
thank you from the depths of my soul for what you're going to do for people in this place tonight. Is it all right if we move this? Whoever, Jeff, anybody? I guess I'm, I'll just, is it okay, Jeff? Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Is it all right if I make this an altar right here? Is that, that all right? All right. I tell you what, I'm just going to make this whole thing an altar right around here. This whole thing. Anywhere on this stage. Pastor Benny, we're getting ready to leave tonight. And in your moment of your moment of what you're going through with your mother tonight, we love you. We praise God for you. Pastor Benny, I almost just feel like every person you're about to see come up and plant seed on this altar. You've been there for all of us so many Monday nights and so many times down through the years. It's almost like every person laying seed on this altar is just blowing you and Jesus a big kiss tonight. Putting our arms around you, telling you that we love you. We praise God for you. Pastor Jim, get a, just a, a great song of worship. Um, I, I know, do one of Pastor Benny's favorites. Anything with the name of Jesus, I found that out. Anything with the name of Jesus, Pastor Benny likes that. Get that ready. And I'm going to pray over this seed, okay, before it even comes. All right, Adlin, I'm going to pray over it before it comes. And then you all play and sing. And just from your place, you can begin to come up and lay it anywhere on this altar. And when you do, here's what I want you to write. Would you write this if you need an envelope? Oh, you have envelopes. Good. If you need an envelope, please, please, we want everybody to have an envelope. Everybody. I'm telling you, if you've ever sown seed, here, this is the night I want you to do it. Please, this is the night I want you to do it. They had to go grab envelopes. I didn't even give a warning for this. Bless you. Everybody get a seed ready. I want them to call Pastor Benny tonight and say, Pastor Benny, you're not going to believe this. You're just not, you're not even going to believe this. What happened in the sanctuary tonight. I want you to write on that envelope before you come. I want you to write, open heaven. Would you do that? Would you write? I like to write stuff on my envelope. Do you all do that here? Do you all write stuff on your... I'll be writing all over my envelope. I write so much stuff on my envelope. Write open heaven. Write it. Write it. Write it. Write it. Write open heaven. Hallelujah. Write open heaven. Get it. Write it on the front. Write it on the back. Write it on your check if you want to. Open heaven. Open heaven. Open heaven. Open heaven. Open heaven. And we exclaim that you are mighty. We lift up your name. Yes, God. Yes, God. For you are holy. Yes, God. We sing it again. All honor and glory. In adoration, we bow before your throne. And we exclaim, Jesus, that you are mighty. Yes, you are, we God. lift up your name, Hallelujah. for you are holy. Yes, 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 yes. Sing it again, honor and glory. In adoration, we bow before Lord. your throne. Hold your envelope up. I declare and I decree. I came for an impartation all the way from Chicago tonight. I didn't know I was going to see you. You didn't know you were going to see me. So we may as well do this. I declare and I decree that from this moment, you have an open heaven in your life. That right now the heavens are open. Ask God for whatever you need. It is an open heaven. I declare it and I decree it. In the name of Lord Jesus. Come on, come on. Lay it on this altar. Lay it on this altar. Come from wherever. Just lay it anywhere. That you are mighty. Do me a favor. Wave to the camera after you turn around. Lay it here. Let Pastor Benny just, just wave to him. Let him see any camera when you lay it there. Just let him feel your love to him. Sing it again. Sing it again.
declare and I decree those of you that are watching tonight on Periscope they just told me those of you that have been with us we're so grateful and the anointing is so high in this place that before we leave you tonight I declare and I decree to every person who's been live with us tonight in the name of Jesus you have an open heaven you have an open heaven you can get in on this you ought to go right now and sow your seed get seed in the ground so that you are able to say I have heard the prophet tonight and I'm creating an open heaven. We love you so much. Thank God for you. This is your day. Pastor Benny, we love you. Everybody on Periscope, we love you. We're going out with worship tonight. So once you have put your seat on the altar, would you just stand to your feet and let's sing it again, Pastor Jim, as we leave this place. Raise those hands to heaven. Before your throne, come on, lift up those hands and say, And we exclaim that you are mighty. We lift up your name, for you are holy. Sing it, sing it again. All honor and glory. Time, Pastor Jim. And we exclaim, yes, God, that you are.